What's up, strugglers? So many shows are just trivia. Trivia in a car. Trivia against smart people. Trivia where you lie. Trivia with hot wings. I don't really like trivia. I get that it's really cheap to produce a show that's just people standing in a shiny room answering wacky questions, but we deserve better than this. Competition shows. That's where it's at, baby. People pushing themselves to their physical and emotional limits. Testing their abilities, battling each other for our entertainment. This is what we deserve. I've got four juicy shows lined up and ready to rock. From the world famous Super Roller Dog. Oh, we're, okay, we're starting already. <laughs> Let's do it. I first heard about this show when I was watching the American Gladiators documentary on Netflix. And the second that theme song hit, I just knew this show is no joke. Roller Games was only on for one season in 1989, but in that one season, they squeezed a lifetime of cheese. If you're familiar with Roller Derby, it's similar to that. If you're not familiar with Roller Derby, don't worry. It's actually not really like that very much. I think Roller Games is best described as WWE on wheels, and this show has everything. Live alligator wrestling, dorky nicknames, cartoonish levels of danger. Well, the violators warm up by pounding each other. That's a bit rare in this league. I mean, how does that not get you fired up? A huge aspect of the show was the big hits that would happen. So let's just check out some of those. Let's get a feel for what the show was like. Mostly it's, again, WWE silliness, right? It's slapsticky, but people freaking love that, man. The WWE is worth like $8 billion or something. So the fakeness level is quite high, but there was one moment where I think Stephanie, sweet, sweet Stephanie, I think she accidentally elbowed a referee in the face for real. Oh, she's comes oh, referee oh. Mike Garth trying to settle down sweet oh. Stephanie and there goes oh. Garth. The look on her face for just a split second makes me think that maybe that wasn't supposed to happen like that. I'm sure it was probably scripted for her to like, oh, hit him with an elbow, but she cracked him. <laughs> Whiplash, broken teeth. Each of the teams that are featured on the show have their own persona or vibe to them. There's the all-American group, the bad guys, the punks, etc., etc. And every now and then they'll cut away to show their like training regimens, I guess. These are a good combination of campy and straight up mystical. Their keeper is Skull, the Cranium Commander, and he only answers to one god, Gamba, the all-powerful. <sighs> Uh, I haven't even talked about how any of this is meant to work. Um, <laughs> whoops. That's because I don't really know, I guess. The point scoring is hard to follow. It's based on how high they get on this ramp and if they can jump over a little thing. It, it doesn't really matter though, because I don't really think of any of this as a real sport. It's more of a three ring circus. This is a sport and not a three ring circus. Shh. Shut up, dude. Someone will get tossed into the crowd and then they'll get up and scream at the spectators and there's children chirping and flipping the skaters off. This is a circus, okay? Oh my, they are lifting sweet stuff in. So I do find the show to be pretty fun. I understand why it only lasted for one season. Cause if you're not getting super into the lore and the storyline of everything like WWE, really all it is is people skating around and hitting each other every now and then. It's just kind of repetitive. Not a lot of variety. I'd give it like a five out of 10. It's worth a good little chuckle. You know, check it out, but don't expect a whole lot from it. So Roller Games is kind of just planned out in advance, I would say. I'm sure there's a little bit of room for the athletes to do their thing, but it's mostly scripted. But our next show is as real as it gets. And it's my personal favorite of the entire video. I've been waiting to talk about this show for so long. First, I got an email. The network has me locked into doing these press conferences. I don't know, it's like a media thing. They're mandatory. I will be right back though. I just gotta do this press conference quick. Thank you to Helix for sponsoring this video. Scott will now answer any questions you guys have. Uh, yeah, you. Mr. Kramer, we've been hearing rumors that Helix makes premium mattresses and bedding to fit your needs. And they're sent straight to your door for free if you live in the US, yeah. What everyone is wondering is how do they know what's 
best for me. Uh, sure. So the Helix Sleep Quiz, it's a, it's a game changer. They ask you a few simple questions about your sleep preferences. They'll show you a mattress that would work best for you. Do you sleep on a Helix mattress yourself? Uh, yep, sure. The wife and I, we sleep on a king size Helix Midnight Luxe mattress. We both sleep on our side. We both prefer a medium firmness to the mattress. So that one, that one gets the job done. We also have the same bed in a queen in the guest bedroom and guests tend to really enjoy that when they come over and sleep here. Uh, yeah. How are you handling the Kurt Cousins injury? Don't even, how, how dare you? Not well. Next question. What if I don't like the mattress? I can't try it in advance after all. Sure, that's a valid question. You do get a 100 night sleep trial to test it out um, and the mattress comes with a 10 year warranty as well. Are there flexible payment plans and financing options available? You bet. Yep, gotta love it. No fiberglass in the mattresses either. Some other companies do that as a fire retardant. Uh, Helix does not, Helix doesn't put fiberglass in there, so good on them. So how can we get our hands on one? Sure, uh, helixsleep.com slash Scott Kramer. That's gonna be your best bet. I love my Helix mattress, and I think you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix Sleep. They have great Cyber Week deals available now. It's the perfect time to upgrade your sleep with 25% off a Helix mattress, plus two free pillows. Ch click the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash Scott Kramer to find out more about this limited time offer. And Scott, Kirk Cousins is not gonna be able okay, to play no, on that we're done here. Thank you so much, no more questions. Thank you to Helix for sponsoring this video. Thank you to you guys as always for clicking my links when I have them, helps me out a ton. Stop asking me about that. That makes me sick to my stomach. Let's get back to the video, okay? Ready, set, splash. 2013's Splash was a celebrity diving competition show. The premise of the show is as inspiring as it is simple. A group of celebs take on the sport of competitive diving and they get eliminated one by one until we can finally answer the question, which of these extraordinarily random people is the best of the group? Why do we care? Why not? You ever think about that? You have to be strong okay. in complete command of your own body. And this show has everything. Serious injuries, caddy drama, NBA Hall of Famer Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I feel like Kareem just says yes to being in everything. He's made so many weird cameos over the years. The divers were all coached by Olympic legend Greg Louganis, and the show's judges were also Olympic divers. So they had some real credibility here on this super random show. This show was on in prime time, right before Dancing with the Stars. In the peak of Dancing with the Stars. For goodness sake, man, why? Nobody knows about this show. How's that even happen? What's better than one hot mom is two hot moms. They got hot moms too. <laughs> Set the DVR, baby. I gotta say, Rory Bushfield came in with a distinct advantage being an extreme skier as his profession. <laughs> this is week one, you say? Yeah, I'd say it's anyone's game, really. The judging in the show was obviously on a bit of a sliding scale based on the perceived talent of the diver. So like Rory and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, they could do the exact same dive and land it the exact same way, but they would score Kareem higher because he was in his mid 60s and Rory does this for a living. So it's more impressive for Kareem to be able to do something than Rory. Diving is such a dangerous thing to do if you don't know what you're doing. And wouldn't you know it, these people did not know what they were doing. <laughs> Here's a rundown of all the injuries that happened during the filming of the show. Talk show sidekick Chewy Bravo broke his foot on the first day. Baywatch star Nicole Eggert took a nasty fall during rehearsals. This one looked like it sucked. And then she came back later just to hurt her back again in the final episode. NFL stud and Dominican Sue smashed his face on the bottom of the pool. Rory ruptured his eardrum during practice. Model Catherine Webb messed up her back and had to withdraw from the competition. Drake Bell belly flopped and gave himself a Frickin' concussion. Good grief. They, were there any safety precautions at all? There were so many times throughout the show when the people would get to competition night when they're diving in front of the judges and they would say, this is my first time attempting this dive. I've yeah. never done a back dive uh, from that height, so. Um... <laughs> Me neither. You have never done that before. No. I swear I heard somebody say that at least once every episode. What are we doing? They had a full week to practice their dives before they were judged. What were you, were you not practicing your dive? They show footage of them practicing, but I, I guess they were practicing easier things and then they thought, I'll just get up there and the adrenaline will carry me to the finish line. It'll be fine. Injuries and fear quitting took out four of the first six people that were eliminated. So 
the show wasn't really working. Buried in all of the injuries, there was a pretty compelling storyline going throughout that I would like to like to talk about. And it was Drake Bell's imaginary feud with Rory Bushfield. So Drake was very often frustrated by his inability to land dives perfectly. He expected too much out of himself and the judges weren't giving him great scores. And like I mentioned earlier, Rory ruptured his eardrum during practice. So there were a bunch of doctors that said, you can't dive head first because you could make it worse. So you got to land on your feet, which coincidentally for Rory is what he's trained his whole life to do with skiing. So it's like, well, this is a shoe in, right? He's going to nail every dive. And Drake did not like that too much. Hey, at least I went in head first, right? That's right. Drake, you're clearly upset. And you made a comment. You said, at least I went in head first. What do you mean by that? You know what I meant by that. Honestly, I kind of do see Drake's point a little bit. Like he wasn't quite diving, but he looked so cool doing what he was doing, it's hard to not give him points. And that sliding scale of judging makes it hard for entertainment purposes alone because they run into some problems. Like for example, Drake himself was actually pretty good at diving, but when it came to the competition, he would f get flustered a little bit and he wouldn't nail it. But he was doing complex things that were trickier than what say Kareem or Louis Anderson were doing. So like Drake would get up there and he'd do a handstand flippy thing and he wouldn't quite nail it. And he would be scored kind of poorly for that but then <laughs> Louis would do this and this was his score. Come on. <laughs> so the show ran the risk of kind of hurting itself because, you know, if somebody's doing cool dives just okay, they have a bigger risk of being eliminated than somebody who's doing really easy dives very well. And as a viewer, it's kind of more fun to watch somebody do cool dives not perfectly. The divers didn't really get good at diving until five or six episodes in. And by that point, a viewer would have already decided whether or not they wanted to watch the show. I managed to stick it out to the end. I saw Rory win the whole thing. I saw people improve. It was fun. I honestly say eight out of 10. I think it could have even been a nine out of 10 if it didn't start so slow. And, um, <laughs> you know, half the contestants didn't quit. Yeah, this is a show I also think is worth checking out. So what's next? <laughs> Okay, I feel like we need a little change of pace here, and that change of pace is change of heart. Nailed it. Physical stuff is all fine and good, but sometimes the best competition is competing for love. Change of Heart was a sort of dating game show that was on in the late 90s and early 2000s. They'd bring in a couple with a shaky relationship and they'd have them go on dates with other people. Then they'd have to decide whether they want to stay together or if they want to continue dating the new person. It's like if Temptation Island was tame instead of absolutely bad crazy. And this show has everything. Jealousy, over the top audience reactions, a set that looks like my old orthodontist office. All right, thank you very much. I'm Chris Jagger. Welcome to Change of Heart. Let's meet today's couple. And in an unusual twist, their mutual best friend. This guy looks so familiar to me. It couldn't be. Dear God, it's the game. This was six years before his Grammy-nominated debut album came out, and he was absolutely violated on national TV. All he do is smother me, or he cries like a baby. He always try to act extra macho, and he's not. I can't get no loving in public. If I told him to go outside naked with a leash on, he'll do it for me. <laughs> She's talking about the same guy who wrote My Life featuring Lil Wayne. I struggle to see it. We found him a cuddly co-ed who loves a man who isn't afraid to show his true feelings. Give it up for Irana Benson. All I could see was curly hair and this beautiful ass. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't keep my eyes off her ass. It was like, and I kind of wanted to take two steps back and kind of trail behind her just so I can kind of look at a G-string. All about the booty, I'm telling you. Booty. <laughs> Banging booty, banging booty. I'm just picturing myself saying this about another woman in front of my wife. She's sitting right next to you, the game. Mr. Game, what am I, what kind of, the? I don't know what to call you. He said that he wanted me to meet his mom at his mom's club, and I didn't know it was a strip club, and oh, hello. I walked in, I saw this butt naked man. Irena, was JT just as fascinated with this guy's moves as you were? He made a little comment that he was gonna show me um, what he has later on. Oh, really? <laughs> Which ain't nothing, so it ain't nothing. <laughs> Is no one gonna say it? You're gonna make me say it? Okay, fine, I'll say it. If she's trying to insinuate that the game has a small wiener, we all know that's not true. We've seen the Instagram posts. Come on. My heart is with Sadita, so that's- So you say, stay together. 
I've had a change of heart. Oh! And I'm grand until I'm dead. Above being my boyfriend, Darren's like my best friend, and we feel really comfortable around each other, and I can tell him anything, and he really listens, which is really hard to find in most men that I've been out with, and it doesn't hurt that he has a sexy body as well. So. Well, that is so sweet. They seem to really love each other. Um, I've got a good feeling about these two. She has smaller boobs than most of the girls I date. The girls I date are taller. Oh, really? Okay, I'm sorry. And a slide. Okay, we're losing it already. He wishes you had uh, more breasts or something you wish he had more of? Well, more hair would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely thought that was going a different direction. Honestly, we have to stop giving a crap about hair going thin. Kings, can we agree? It's about what's right here that really matters. Chest hair, okay? Grow it out, be a man. We got to a party and... Care. We went together, we were dating, and I leave her for 15 minutes, and I come back to try and find her, and she's like, totally making out with this oh. kid. Like, <laughs> okay. 16 years old. 16 years old. Now, now we get no, no, a little we better understanding. Well, let me ask you this, Jamie. No, no, you just thought we were dating. Minutes. Okay, well, no, we're just gonna brush past that. She was making out with a 16 year old at a party. I gotta call Mr. Gigi again. His work is not done. Is there any way Darren can He's, compete? Yeah, maybe if he dress better and learn how to change his clothes. What's no, he looks dress? nice today, he looks nice. He wears blue jeans and the same blue shirt every time we've ever been out. I'm not wearing blue jeans. Every time we've ever been out. Uh, it seems that Darren and Jamie Lynn have a few rough edges to sort of smooth out here. Oh, you don't say. Hey, remember a couple minutes ago when they were talking about how they were best friends? <laughs> well, now we get to meet the people that Darren and Jamie went on their individual dates with, and I'm sure this will go very smoothly. Jamie Lynn, do you think Allison's assets are more to Darren's liking? Yeah, if you like bimbos with no brain. Now, Jamie. <laughs> Can we get through two seconds of conversation without calling someone a bimbo? One of the things oh. we heard earlier was Jamie Lynn saying that Darren wears the same thing all the time, some blue shirt. Uh, what was he wearing when you guys were together? Well, actually, when he came to pick me up, he was wearing a blue shirt. Ah! <laughs> I'm feeling quite self-conscious right now, if I'm being honest. What's so bad about the blue shirt? Nothing blue, wrong with the way I was no, dressed. open with a white t-shirt. I just got this. <laughs> Do I have to get rid of it? Please welcome Dave LaCar. Oh, hello. Well, I'm sorry. Steve the Hair Harrington over here. Coming in with a blue shirt. Boo this man. Boo him. How dare he? I'm disgusted. I'm absolutely horrifically offended. Jamie Lynn, you said that Darren's losing his hair. Does it look like Dave would ever have that problem? No, not at all. He's got a nice, thick set of hair. <laughs> you see, here's the problem with staking your relationship on this fella's hair. He might wake up one day and it's just gone. Then what? You gonna go find another blue shirt to fall in love with? I want an update on Dave, by the way. This came out like 20 years ago. Does Dave still have a full head of hair? We need to investigate. Darren's complaint was about Jamie Lynn's chest. You have a problem with that? She has beautiful breasts. I don't know what his problem is, man. Look at this skin. She's like soft and she has this beautiful hair. I'm just like, I want to eat her up, you know? Look at how upset Darren Aww. looks. <laughs> Honestly, man, that's what you get. You can't sit there and drool over this freaking bimbo. <laughs> No, you can't drool over this woman's breasts in front of your girlfriend and not expect to get absolutely humbled on the spot. Dave is gonna eat her up. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. I had a really, really awesome date with Allison. Probably the best date I've ever had. She's very sexy. Yeah! Um, everything that I want in a girl. But I don't want to just go run into the arms of some other girl right now. Um, I want to be mature about this and I want to stay together. Brother. That ship has sailed. If that was the case, you wouldn't be here in the first place, would you? I don't want to run in the arms of another woman. I'm happy in my relationship. Why are you here? Darren does say he wants to stay together. It's your decision. What do you say? Darren, he doesn't seem to like my body or appreciate things that are important, like my poetry. Aww. I found somebody who does appreciate all those things, so... And I know Darren and I will always stay good friends, but I think I'm gonna... <laughs> good friends? Uh, honey. That ship has sailed as well. I am gonna break up with you and I'm gonna date this man right here with the blue shirt, but we should go to a water park next weekend or something. Hit up the farmer's market, what do you say? When did the death of this genre happen? The trashy relationship put on display on a stage with the host. I am happy that it ended, now, let me be clear, but you just don't really see it that much anymore. And this show is interesting because it's entirely based on tell, don't show, which is kind of the opposite of what people are doing now. They go on the dates and they don't even get any footage of it. We just have to trust that it happened. And I don't know, maybe that's fine because if there were cameras following you around on a date, it would totally like alter the experience. Um, but at the same time, I don't think any of this is real. So <laughs> to rate this show, here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna start at 10 out of 10 and we're gonna take away a point 
every time they talk about somebody's breasts, okay? Bigger boobs, smaller boobs, yes. more breasts, perfect breasts, beautiful breasts, her chest size, Jamie Lynn's chest, her chest is best. Ah, okay, two out of 10 today, folks. Thanks for playing. Physical 100 is a Korean competition show where 100 contestants battle each other to find out um, who has the best physique. So, what a waste of time that must have been, seeing as though we already <laughs> we already have a pretty good idea. They could have just called me. This show caught my eye when I saw the trailer for the first time. Yeesh. There were a couple contestants in the introduction that said they were willing to kill in order to stay on the show. Won't stop until someone drops dead. We could kill if he harassed you. Which is a little concerning because the last time I watched a Korean competition show like this, they took that a little too seriously. But this show has everything. Rope activities, pirate ships, a terrible English dub that I had to watch for multitasking purposes. Watch Jin Yon's fast! Watch Jin Yon's fast! Jin Yon's fast! Jin Yon's fast! How come he's so fast? He's fast, he's fast! Whoa, he's fast. The contestants come from all different backgrounds. Some do CrossFit, some are professional athletes. There's a concerning number of them who are simply Instagram models. They coincidentally are the majority of the first people eliminated when the actual challenges start to happen. Every contestant had a cast of their body made and if we look a little bit there we go that one that i think that one's mine and when the contestants get eliminated they have to smash that statue with a hammer and it's super dramatic and i love it every single time and this has got to be a pretty big blow to their ego because the whole point of the show is to find who has the best body so having to stand there and physically destroy your body because it wasn't good enough that's gotta hurt a little bit <laughs> be honest if we were all stripped naked i'd be close to perfect from the neck down so there you go there's a senior quote for you what i'm looking to see is is there anyone with a body prettier than mine? Me every time I enter an Applebee's. That's crazy. Why is everyone so fit? Buddy, that's the show. <laughs> so challenges range from free-for-alls to one-on-one -on -one battles to team-centered tests. And each challenge has its own big elaborate set built for it. Some of them have really simple rules while others are a little bit more complex. But even with all that stuff, I'm being totally honest with you when I say my favorite thing that happened in the entire show was when they were all just waiting in the lounge area between contests and the guys stacked up a bunch of mats just to see who could jump the highest. <laughs> this was not part of the games. It had no impact on the competition whatsoever. This is just guys being dudes. That's crazy. It really just shows that no matter where you are in the world, no matter your career or personal beliefs, guys are gonna stack up the mats and see who can jump the highest. Speaking of the lounge area, when everybody first got in there, they were like absolutely losing their minds over the protein powder. <laughs> protein shakes. What? All kinds of protein were displayed on the shelf. Protein snacks, protein drinks, packaged chicken breasts, eggs. Isn't this your dream come true? Yeah, totally. That is delicious. This tastes so good. The stereotypes about gym people are just... Like, they reinforce it every time they're together in a group. I don't know. Like, you get a group of gamers in a room, and they're, like, freaking out about the keyboard RGB lights or something. By the end of the show, I was so invested in every single contestant that I hated seeing anybody go home. They did a really good job of, like, highlighting basically everybody, not just a select few like other shows like to do. The best episode for me was when they did the Greek mythology trials, and everybody got to choose which challenge they were doing. Instead of everyone doing the same one, they got to pick which one they thought was best for them. And these are just so fun to watch. I kept doing that thing where I was just sitting on the couch thinking I could destroy these people if I was competing. I have no justification for that. I just, I'm pretty sure I could. Endless rope climbing? <laughs> Cake! Running around a track, seemingly forever, trying to be the last one caught? I almost won a beer mile once. Okay, so put some respect on me. I can handle this baby game. One of the most heartbreaking moments in the entire show was watching these men be absolutely broken physically and emotionally pushing these rocks up and down a hill. Last man standing wins and it's just raw human will to fight and survive. It is genuinely awesome. I'm not even joking about that. I love that episode so much. Not to be outdone by the semifinals where the oldest and heaviest remaining contestant absolutely gives it his all and battles to the last second, even though he knows there's no way he's gonna win this thing and the fact that everyone is so respectful and encouraging to each other even though they're competing for like 220,000 US dollars it's just ugh. 
It's just great to watch. Ultimately, I would say the show is like if they took the challenge portions of Survivor and stretched it out into a full hour long episode and they really let it breathe. They spend a lot of time focusing on each contestant. You really get in their head. You, you understand how they're feeling about what's happening, what they're thinking every individual person's strategy. Sometimes it can feel like the show is a little bit slow because of that, especially if you're like me and you binge watched every single episode back to back to back. But it really, ultimately, I say it's a breath of fresh air. So much media now is just like getting faster and faster and like swipe up, baby, get to the next vertical video. And even TV shows are starting to dip into that a little bit. But this show had the freaking guts to slow way down. And I really appreciate that. Now, some stuff... It could be tightened up a little bit. I mean, they spend the first 30 minutes of the first episode introducing every single contestant one by one, and they might have been able to edit that down. <laughs> just keep the pacing going a little smoother, but that's just a little nitpick from me. I think the show is a 7 out of 10, a strong 7 out of 10, but there is lots of room for improvement, and they're getting a second season, so I'm very optimistic. All the kinks will be worked out by then. It's on Netflix. I tried to not completely spoil everything for you, just a general little idea of what the show is about. I recommend you go watch it. It's, um, it's pretty fun. So there we have it. Four more competition shows. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, I've done two others like it in the past, so you're, you can check those out as well. Or any of my other videos, stick around. Let's hang out. It's, this is a good vibe. You know, we're vibing. I want to keep this thing going. The holiday season is coming up, as I'm sure every other YouTuber on Earth has already told you. So, you know, if you want to get some merch for yourself or for a family member or a friend as a gift, hey, I think that's pretty cool. Strugglershop.com, there's a bunch of cool stuff on there. Okay, extra thank you to my patrons. Those listed here are in the top tier on there. You guys are so great. I would push a rock up and over a hill infinite times for you. I would do that for you. All right, that's all I got for you this time. I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.